हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन आवर लास्ट क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विथ लॉस्ट स्प्रिंग एंड लॉस्ट स्प्रिंग इज रिटन बाय अनिश जंग इन योर सिलेबस देर आर टू स्टोरीज फ्रॉम दिस बुक लॉस्ट स्प्रिंग स्टोरीज ऑफ स्टोलन चाइल्डवुड एंड फर्स्ट स्टोरी इज अबाउट साहेब आलम हु इज अ रैक पिकर बेसिकली दे आर फ्रॉम साहेब आलम एंड हिज एंटायर फैमिली दे आर फ्रॉम ढाका बांग्लादेश नाउ दे हैड टू माइग्रेट टू इंडिया बिकॉज एंटायर एग्रीकल्चरल फील्ड ऑफ साहेब आलम वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड इन नेचुरल कैलामिटी डे फॉर इन सर्च ऑफ सम अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड मीन्स ऑफ सर्वाइवल दे हैड माइग्रेटेड टू इंडिया एंड इवन आफ्टर रिसाइडिंग इन इंडिया फॉर सो मेनी ईयर्स दे कुड नॉट अपग्रेड दम सेल्स फाइनली ही हैड टू वर्क इन अ टी स्टॉल वेर ही वॉज पेड एट हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड ऑल हीज मील्स एंड ही वॉज नॉट हैप्पी बट वेन वी सी फाइनेंशियली ही वॉज एट अ बेटर प्लेस डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई लास्ट वीडियो आई हैड फो गॉटन टू मैंशन वन वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड लेट मी कम्प्लीट दैट फर्स्ट एंड देन आई मूव टू द सेकेंड स्टोरी एंड द लाइन विच इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पॉर्टेंट इज सीमापुरी इज अ प्लेस ऑन द पेरी फेरी ऑफ डेली येट माइल्स अवे फ्रॉम इट मेटाफॉरिकली सी स्टूडेंट्स आउट हियर वी फाइंड लिटरेरी डिवाइस एंटीथेसिस एंड एंटीथेसिस मीन्स अ रेटोरिक डिवाइस और अ लिटरेरी डिवाइस बाई विच टू कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग आइडियाज आर जस्ट अपोज इन पैरल फॉर्म और इन सिंपल वर्ड एंटीथेसिस इज कॉन्ट्रास्ट ओके सो नाउ हियर we see simapuri is underdeveloped and delhi is extremely developed okay when we question somebody about delhi everybody will be able to tell where it is and for what uh, things it is famous but not about simapuri but ironically simapuri lies simapuri it is situated just next to delhi therefore in terms of development in terms of better living in terms of getting jobs in terms of getting better opportunities simapuri is very 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 far from delhi therefore the comparison is made and the comparison is totally contrast to each other students in story 2 it is mukesh who is the protagonist and by vocation he is a bangal maker and it is not only he his father his forefathers everybody were there in glass bangal industry bangal making industry in firozabad okay and others had never dreamt of changing their vocation ever but mukesh thinks of doing so mukesh thinks of becoming something else and let us find out what is his dream mukesh insists on being his own master i will be a motor mechanic he announces do you know anything about cars i ask now see somebody said that in order to accomplish your dream you need to take the first step by dreaming all right and this first step is already achieved by mukesh he says i'll become a motor mechanic he is very much passionate about cars he is very much passionate about vehicles okay and by this we get to see mukesh is very much courageous because he dare to dream of a very different life okay which none of his family members has done and not only that he he wants to carve out a new destiny he wants to give shape to a new future okay not only to he himself but to his entire life sorry to entire family as well okay so this is the positive thing that we get to see in mukesh a bangal maker i will learn to drive a car he answers looking straight into my eyes his dream looms like a mirage amidst the dust of his streets that fill his town firozabad famous for its bangles every other family in firozabad is engaged in making bangles it is the center of india's glass blowing industry where families have spent generations working around furnaces welding glass 
making bangles for all the women in the land it seems here we find mukesh as an optimist it is because even though he does not know how to drive a car he says he will learn this shows that how much enthusiastic he was towards learning the art of garage but the question is is this dream going to be practicalized the answer is no why it is because even if he will leave a day's work as a bangle maker he is not going to survive okay he can dream and that is what he has done but he cannot get support from his family members and uh, from society as well in order to have his dream accomplished that is the main problem of mukesh he can dream but cannot accomplish his desire and here it says that his dream looms like a mirage amidst the dust of street that fills his town firozabad it is going to become just like illusion the illusion that we see in desert okay it is just an eye wash it is just uh, you know something which deceives us the same way his dream is going to deceive mukesh because it will never be practicalized and for making it happen he requires special support of society he needs somebody to uh, uh, send him to school which is not possible and forget about getting help from his parents therefore because of all these constraints he is trapped in bangle making industry and he cannot dream of getting out of it but if somebody helps him certainly he will be out of it firozabad is a city in up uttar pradesh okay one of the indian states and um, this is the main industry this is the prime industry for bangle making from here only maximum export of bangles are done to other cities and other towns of india okay so here wherever you shower your gaze wherever you see you will find bangles bangles of different colors and in order to make these bangles entire generations had slogged okay they could not think of different world they could not think of world of education they could not think of getting better job so that they can earn more money this was their fate they had accepted and they were working continuously even after working for generations in this glass bangle industry they could not uplift themselves they could not upgrade themselves it is because the money that they received as their wages it is too low the hours that they put in for working and the money that they receive in their hand there is no comparison at all therefore they could not think of missing their work even for a day therefore they had given up thinking about any other profession for a change let's move to the next paragraph now Mukesh family is among them none of them know that it is illegal for children like him to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light that the law if enforced could get him and all those 20000 children out of the hot furnaces where they slog their daylight hours often losing the brightness of their eyes mukesh eyes beam as he volunteers to take me home which he proudly says is being rebuilt here writer says mukesh family is among them it means even mukesh family belongs to bangle making community and everybody is very much engaged in that mukesh mukesh father and even mukesh forefather were engaged in this particular vocation or profession okay now nobody knows that it is illegal it is illegal to make children work in these dingy cells in these dull dark furnaces okay but even after knowing do you think people will go and report it to police certainly no because whatever it is it is giving them daily bread by this work they are earning their 
daily bread therefore nobody is going to report and the condition is so pathetic out here small children should go outside they should have fresh air for their growth they should play they should be active they should be like a squirrel okay who uh, is engaged in fun and frolic but it is not so they, there is no proper infrastructure there is no basic amenities facilities and these furnaces are very ill lit there is no proper light these are ill ventilated there is no proper exchange of fresh air and not only that they are working without protective eye gear because of which their eye sights are taken away at very early age and because of continuous working in same position their postures are also ruined so when they come out of these cells when they come out of these furnaces they don't remain normal they are they are physically tired their posture is ruined and not only that they become aged very quickly and uh, as we know anish jung she was very much friendly to these children be it sahebe alam or mukesh they were very happy with the writer and the one day mukesh had taken anish jung to his house and he is so happy there is brightness in his eyes because he wants to show the writer the uh, the house which is being rebuilt okay the house of course it is not a well built house okay it is just a house which is it is just a construction of hay and straw okay but even then he is happy because this is possession of mukesh compared to others we walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage past homes that remain hovels with crumbling walls wobbly doors no windows crowded with families of humans and animals coexisting in a primeval state he stops at the gate he stops at the door of one such house bangs a wobbly iron door with his foot and pushes it open we enter a half built shack in one part of it thatched with dead grass is a firewood stove over which sits a large vessel of sizzling spinach leaves mukesh lives in slum area and there is no proper sanitation there is no proper drainage system there is no proper garbage dumping area okay the structures are not proper they are wobbly okay they are shaky some are half made some are left unconstructed so we find the area is not at all cheerful now here also they had to live and uh, not only human beings but animals as well okay they had to coexist with animals maybe because they reared animals for selling it for eating also but because of lack of space both animals and human beings had to remain under one roof and this shows the primitive time okay the ancient time where uh, especially nomads okay especially our ancestors used to live where animal they used to eat animal and they used to survive here in firozabad they had to live in such way it is because there is no other option and they are into perpetual poverty because of their penury because of their poverty they are not able to think of a better living society or area finally mukesh reaches to his house with the writer and we get to see we readers get to see it was not a pakka house it was made by straw and hay it was a temporary house but they are very proud in having this house also because this is their possession others they don't have even such kind of house for living okay and inside the house we get to see there is something being cooked by a lady who was she let us find out on the ground in large aluminium platters are more chopped vegetables a frail young woman is cooking 
the evening meal for the whole family. Through eyes filled with smoke, she smiles. She is the wife of Mukesh's elder brother, not much older in years. She has begun to command respect as the Bahu, the daughter-in-law of the house, already in charge of three men: her husband, Mukesh, and her fa- and their father. First course of society that is child labor we have already seen in the furnace. Second one is here inside the house of Mukesh, that is child marriage. This little girl, who is not uh, adequate for getting married, she is housed. Okay, she is housed for taking charge of this entire house. She is bahu. Okay, daughter-in-law, and in Indian system, it is bahu's duty to do everything for entire family. Okay, so she is also devoid of her spring season. That is, even she has lost her spring season of her life. Do you think that this little girl is not desiring of playing? Do you think she is, fe- you know, she is feeling happy being burdened as a bahu, as a wife? No, not at all. But this, you know, is instilled in their mind that. after so and so age they should get married and they should be in charge of some family and because of that they don't you know voice of they don't voice as well and there lies the problem and this is you no know, prime curse of our society let us see further what happens in the story another point that attracts our attention is aluminium platters now see here aluminium platters are another reason for being poor it is because aluminium utensils it absorbs the nutrition that is present in the food okay and when we eat that becomes lack of nutrition and this is uh, plenty this is in abundance in poor family members okay it is because they are very cheap okay therefore we prefer them now when somebody eats in aluminium platter they are eating just food but not nutritious food therefore we should abandon aluminium platters aluminium foils as soon as possible and remember aluminium platters um it creates alzheimer it creates heart disease it creates kidney disease and be in order to cure them uh, poor people they waste their money and entire life they remain poor when the older man enters she gently withdraws behind the broken wall and brings a veil closer to her face as custom demands daughters in law must veil their faces before male elders in this case the elder is an impoverished bangle maker despite long years of hard labor first as a tailor then a bangle maker he has failed to renovate a house send his two sons to school all he has managed to do is teach them what he knows the art of making bangles students according to conventional system it is necessary for daughter in laws to cover their face in front of elderly uh, people okay especially male this is regarded as a mark of respect for them all right so even mukesh bhabhi did that but there is unspoken desire for freedom there is unspoken desire to enjoy her childhood as well okay but because she is into this system she has to obey the rules and regulations of her community also unlike mukesh uh, bhabhi does not go for working in glass furnaces but there is more work for her in house itself because she shoulders the responsibility she shoulders the burden of entire household work okay and she is the in charge of all three members let's talk about mukesh's father now he is a representative of underpaid and uh, over exploited bangle makers of firozabad and uh, <clears throat> till now what father has done he just had a hand to mouth existence throughout his life 
okay and despite exploring two professions that is uh, as a tailor and as a bengal maker <clears throat> he has not been able to build either a pakka house or send his small children to school mukesh father had expertise in uh, making of bangles and this is the art which he had given it to his upcoming generation that is mukesh and his brother it is his karam his destiny says mukesh grandmother who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles can a god given lineage ever be broken she implies born in the caste of bangal makers they have seen nothing but bangles in the house in the yard in every house every other yard every street in firozabad here mukesh grandmother views the art of bangal making as a destiny of a family her husband's blindness their misfortune and uh, impoverished condition she feels it was uh, predecided by god okay it it was predestined it is because years of deprivation and uh, years of suffering made her think so so many years they had tried and there is no scope of betterment therefore they they thought that it is their karma it is already written in their faith it is already written in their destiny okay to become bangal maker and this is the view point of grandmother she 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 is a fatalist okay who thinks uh, who thinks that whatever has uh, whatever has to happen that will happen and whatever is happening in their life it was already written by god so it is happening spirals of bangles sunny gold paddy green royal blue pink purple every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow lie in mounds in unkempt yards are piled on four wheeled hand carts pushed by young men along the narrow lanes of the shanty town and in dark hutments next to lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles students here we need to understand the irony which is revealed by anish jung she says that in each nooks and corner of firozabad we can see variety of beautiful bangles which are of different hues which are of different colors but the one who are making it the laborers who are making it their life is devoid of playfulness there there is no happiness they their entire you know their entire life is into it they right from the dawn to dusk they work but they are not paid well okay because of which their entire life is slogging into it their entire life is ruined into it all right so the one who are creating colorful beautiful bangles their own life is not beautiful at all their life is ugly the place where they live is ugly okay there is no color in their life color of happiness color of fun color of merriment let's see other lines their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults savita a young girl in a drab pink dress sits alongside an elderly woman shouldering pieces of glass as her hands move mechanically like the tongs of a machine i wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she helps make here in these factories uh, small children they have to work entire day and uh, throughout night therefore their eyes are adjusted more with dark than with light so when they go out okay their eyes are unadjusted with uh, the normal schedule therefore they lose their eyesight before time and here in the story we see a girl 
called Savita. She is just like Mukesh, who is working in glass bengal industry, and uh, she has because she is also shouldering pieces of glass. That is, she is making bangle. Okay, and she has become just like machine. She whatever she is doing, she is doing very quickly. Okay, just like a tongs of a machine. It means she has become so much expert in doing that that she is doing it very speedily. Okay, and she does not know what is the sanctity, what is the purity of this these bangles. She has to make it in order to earn money. Apart from that, there is no definition of these bangles. But uh, she must know that in Indian culture, this is what represents suhag. But because she is totally unaware about its sanctity, she has only one definition, and that is. it is a means of survival for her and when she will become a bride that time she is going to understand its sanctity it symbolizes an indian woman's suhag auspiciousness in marriage it will dawn on her suddenly one day when her head is draped with a red veil her hands dyed red with henna and red bangles rolled onto her wrists she will then become a bride like the old woman beside her who became one many years ago she still has bangles on her wrist but no light in her eyes ek waqt sher bhar khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice drained of joy she has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire lifetime that is what she has reaped the bangles it symbolizes suhag of women okay without uh, bangles we don't see any marriages uh, being held all right and this little girl savita who is making bangles uh, very soon even she will get married even her hands will be adorned even her hands will be decorated with these bangles but so ironically these bangles and her married status would not bring any positive change in her life she will be burdened with responsibilities and because of her continuous working in bangal industry she might lose her eyesight at very early age as well and not only that even she has to struggle for getting her meals and other necessary items even she will become another bahu just like mukesh bhabhi who has lost her childhood at very early age her husband an old man with a flowing beard says i know nothing except bangles all i have done is make a house for the family to live in hearing him one wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime he has a roof over his head the cry of not having money to do anything except carrying on the business of making bangles not even enough to eat rings in every home the young men echo the lament of their elders here the man says he has exhausted entire life in this bangle making and somehow he could make a house for his family members and this is an achievement for him others they don't have a roof uh, to live underneath okay but why this is happening why he is not able to uh, uplift himself let us see it is number 1 because of poverty it is because of acute poverty number 2 it is lack of education if they were ed educated they would have understood what are the other options that they can opt in their life not only that if they were not exploited by their owners they would have thought of doing something uh, beneficial for themselves but because of back breaking and mind numbing hard work at glass furnaces they are left with no time no desire to dream Uh, for a better future eventually what happened they have accepted their poverty as their destiny in the last line we get to see being born in a caste of bangle makers in uh, firozabad 
it is both a destiny and a curse their birth extreme poverty lack of education and opportunity makes them take up the profession of bangle making at a very early age i have already told you because of lack of options this closes all doors and stops them from exploring any other avenues in life they end up losing their spirit and uh, they end up losing their eyesight as well students i'll continue with the story in my next video and i'll compare both sahib e alam and mukesh as well and i'll talk about eradication of poverty and uh, rules and regulations as well